All right, we are on Lake Manitoba with my buddy Keevan. We got the aqua views rolling and we are trying to get some stupid shallow walleye strikes on the camera. Why is it so windy? It's way windier out here than it yeah, was. Yeah, <laughs> there was no wind on shore. Where do you want me to drill, Keevan? Um, generally speaking, this area here was like, this is kind of the, where, where we've been catching them. And we're like three feet of water. Yeah, yeah maybe less. <laughs> really? Yeah. I've actually never fished Lake Manitoba late in the season. And it is now March 26th, I think. And we are back on Lake Manitoba, part of my last kick for the season. One last tour. And we're back with Kevin Erickson, the man of the inner lake. Lake Manitoba, he said the, the, the bite's been phenomenal lately, so. We'll see that something else that happens too is the lake clears up. So we're trying to get some underwater footage because uh, we're in three feet of water. The lake's cleared up. We're super shallow. The sun's a little bit higher. So that's the goal today, getting some underwater strikes. And we're just going to start plopping holes and catching walleyes. Maybe some bonus perch, maybe a burbot, maybe a whitefish, maybe a tulipy, maybe a goldfish. Look at those blades. All season on the same set of blades and they're still just scary sharp. There's a lot of ice. You weren't lying, Keevan. I tried to convince Keevan we didn't need an extension, but. Who sits on their knees when you can sit in a chair? Sitting on your knees is an unnecessary thing and it's not cool. We got aqua views for days and days and days. All right, we're using the AquaView HD 7i Pro. Um, I like this camera because it has longer battery life than the 10. The 10 is a bigger screen, which is nice in some situations. For me, I'd rather get that longer runtime. So I actually did a whole video on how I retrofit this with a lithium battery inside to give me even more runtime. Um, they do have some portable versions, which are good if you're not recording, but if you are recording, then the quality is better on this camera. So I got the camera, I got the pod, which helps you turn it and get the precise, you know, everything lined up. And then this Aver Media recorder you need if you want to record. It's all linked this. I have a video, I'll link that video as well where I kind of go through the steps on how to set it up but for now we're gonna see how shallow we really are Keevan says like three feet of water so I question most things Keevan says so I like to see it for myself so you're doing a rattle bait I've got a rattle bait yeah whoever gets to it first Keevan gets the fish okay I know how slow you are so oh no you don't know yeah I've never uh, walleye fished the shallow anywhere ever ever forever do you have a live minnow on that one yeah see if Jeff trying to get some bass master out here Jeffrey Gustafson Yo, Bassmaster. Do we have enough service? We need a spot with better service to watch the Bassmaster weigh in. Only six more people to weigh in and then Gussie. Oh, perch. Nice perch, come on, baby. Staring at it. This, might, this bait might be a little too big. Do you want a little tungsten with some minnow on it? That'd be amazing. We'll catch this fish with a tungsten for sure. This should be, should be good, Keevan. I'll just drop my keep my bait in the mud. Oh, there you go. Yep. Can you see him? I'm gonna get my rattle bait out of the water. This is what good friends do. It's kind of tough to tell from that angle if he is eating it. Did he eat it? I think so. Nice. <laughs> just up into the heavens. <laughs> That's so shallow. Good fight on that one. Little. Whoa. <laughs> Start that again. <laughs> Little Lake Manitoba slimy perch. <laughs> okay, let's just let him go. He's gone. He's gone. One more time for the folks at home. Little Lake Manitoba perch who really wants to go back. That's a good sign. All right. Sometimes it's nice to have a little one-two punch with a little tungsten. Yeah. This is what I'm using to call the fish in, and this should be walleye candy. This is Keevan's favorite Lake Manitoba bait. This is the Frostbite Tantrum. This is one size up from the smallest. I forget the exact millimeter. I'll overlay it on the screen. That size, it's just, you can catch big perch on it. You can catch walleyes on it, you can catch big walleyes on it. But uh, it's just a good confidence size for a lot of the fish here. And uh, that's what I'm doing. I got a dead stick out there with the live minnow. Keevan's got a rattle bait as well. And then obviously this little tungsten here is what uh, did the deed on that perch. A little five mil tungsten. We're gonna just keep this ready. Well, Keevan, you didn't lie. We're on him. We're on him. Super six at the Bassmaster Classic. Here we are, it is the end of March. We're on Lake Manitoba and we're watching the Bassmaster Classic on live stream. What a time to be alive. What a time. With Canada's own Jeff Gussie Gustafson. 
He could be the first Canadian to win the Bassmaster Classic, which would be absolutely incredible for Canadians. First Canadian to win the Bassmaster Classic. I'd probably do a somersault on the ice. Promise? Yeah, I'll try. Okay. Gus, he has a pretty, he had a nine pound or eight pound lead going into the final day and he only caught two fish based on Bass Track. Bass Track is like the live feed sort of, it, it gives you estimates on how big the fish are. So based on Bass Track, he's gonna win, but only by a pound or a pound and a bit, which Bass Track is just kind of anglers predicting how big the fish are. So there's definitely some room for error on that. So you only really know once the weigh-in happens and they're weighing in the final six right now. So very exciting. It'd be more exciting if we knew Gussie won it and had five fish, but I guess it makes it a little more tense. Now a little further back, a little to the right. You put your left foot in, you put your left foot in, and you shake it all about. Go see! Snow Leopard. I would be losing my mind. Oh, Two fish. Oh, I'm nervous. Needs five pounds, four ounces. Six pounds! Oh, I guess he was! <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is amazing. Unreal. Gussie won the Bassmaster Classic. Unbelievable. I grew up going to the Winnipeg Boat Show. Yeah, I remember him doing seminars and going up and asking him questions and just, he's been doing it. He's been doing it for a while and uh, on such a high level and just incredible. I think that trophy is going to be coming back to Kenora and hopefully I get a seat at some point. Very proud. Jess made a lot of sacrifices, a lot of time on the road, a lot of time away from family and friends to do that, but that's what you have to do for anything, really. Right now I'm sacrificing the warmth of my hands to catch a walleye. The walleye should start moving in soon. We are hiding from the wind behind my snow machine. This lake is so big and open, it gets nasty when it gets windy. And even though it's the end of March, it ain't nice right now. Where are the walleyes? You see one? Nope. I'm just imagining what one may look like. Walleye, walleye, walleye. Yeah. Got him. Yep. Hey, that's a start. There we go. On the board. Keevan promised me walleye and pierogies tonight for dinner, so. Sweet. That was cool. He was in a good mood. First of many. The rattlebait did it. The first one's the toughest, you know? This is the Bassmaster Classic of ice fishing right now. Sweet. Let's go catch another. Let's get another one. Let's get another one. Let's get another one. We're on them. They're biting. Do you want to catch a walleye? Do you want to slap it up? Do you want to catch a walleye? Put it in some catch and cook. Should have been here three days ago, says Keevan. We couldn't keep him off the hook. Three of us caught 57 walleye in 42 minutes. And then we come out here and this is what we get. It's a big lake. <laughs> come on. <laughs> I was fishing here first! Carry that spare. I often get asked, you know, what, what's the right, right piece of equipment for me? Is it an underwater camera? Is it a live scope? Is it GPS slash, you know, 2D unit? And I, I think the answer is dependent on where you fish and how you like to fish. If I spent a lot of my time fishing in shallow water or clear water, this Lake Manitoba is not a clear lake, but when you're fishing the shallow, you can kind of get away with it with the underwater camera. It's all about the type of stuff you fish. If you fish Lake Simcoe a lot, I think an aqua view is amazing because it's crystal clear water. If you fish the Red River, well, then, you know, it might not make the most sense. I, I think the most engaging way, more engaging than live scope, is watching a fish on the underwater camera, but it's not suitable in all situations. But in this situation, live scope wouldn't really help me much. It's three feet of water. I'd only be seeing however many feet out. And when these fish come in, a lot of them are just coming in and and eating anyways, so. In this situation, I love the aqua view, but I mean, the real answer, you gotta buy it all. But I know that's not realistic either. Mr. Keevan Sr., Lauren, the mayor of Lundar, has moved in beside us in the Arts Band Shack. What time is it, Keevan? Time to catch a fish. Time to catch a fish. Oh, fish, 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 fish. Oh, baby. Yeah, I lost it for sure. Oh, well, we'll have to replay the footage on that one. 
Drop back down. Honestly, I've seen some fish get stung hard and bite again right away. I'm surprised I lost it. Yeah. It's just so shallow. You... Yeah, just right to the bottom. There it is. Oh, I just got it. It's great <laughs> shot. Great shot. It's a decent walleye. Dude, it's a decent fish. Yeah, it looked nice. No. I think it hooked again. Yeah, it wasn't on there. Oh, man. Minnow me. Oh, that sucked, dude. That was a good fish. It did exactly what it was supposed to do. Dude. Yeah, I know. You're like, oh, it might bite again. No, I'm just going to drop it down and see if that fish is there. On this, we got the meathead with a live minnow. Just a staple. I got a fish. Got him. Got him. No! No. You're kidding me. There he is. He's there. He ate it again. I got him a fourth time. There's no way this is the same fish every time. He's getting out of the hole. Ooh, that's nice. Man, that took way too... <laughs> I, I think that was the same one four times. The old meathead jig. Like they say, fourth time is the try. Right, Keevan? Is the try, yeah. Fourth time is the charm, as they say, Keevan. Fourth try is the... Fourth try is the charm. Well, we are eating pierogies and pickerel tonight. <laughs> the old PP. As you can see, this fish is getting frosty on this eye, and that's just what happens with extreme wind and keeping the fish outside. This fish we're keeping, but we're gonna dispatch them, and uh, it's gonna be delicious. We got some live minnows from the fishing hole this morning. So this is the meathead jig, and this is the smallest size of the meathead jig. And one of my favorite frostbite lures they discontinued was the seven mil tungsten. That seven mil tungsten was such a good bait, caught a lot of good sized walleyes with it, but it did have a smaller hook. So this meathead jig is pretty cool because it has a clevis, and the hook actually has a bit of a, I think it's a 23 or 25 degree angle that it tilts up, which is just, you know, the, the perfect angle for a fish coming up to hit at it for a live bait jig. Obviously it comes barbed. I pinched the barbs on this one because we're fishing in Manitoba. And then it's got the attachment for the stinger hook. I like doing the stinger hook. You do risk losing some fish to the bottom of the hole with that extra hook. But what I'm doing is, yeah, hook through the head and then that stinger halfway through the body and then it's uh, it's just a delicious little morsel for a walleye to eat four times in a row, apparently. Don't know how much longer we'll have light for the camera, but... Another one! Got him! We got the hot hole, Kevin. He took my minnow. He just put her out. <laughs> my bait man, Kevin. That's so funny. Dude, I dropped it down and before it hit the bottom, I saw a walleye just come and swipe at it. So funny. That one, it, it, he was in the hole. Like he just turned around in the hole and did, got away. Yeah, that was op, that was just me. My hands are getting cold. There's only a big shack behind us to fish in. As I was saying, <laughs> what just happened? Did you get that? Cameraman Brandon is losing his mind right now. I don't know what just happened. I think Keevan might have broke his back. What just happened there, Keevan? I did the my somersault for Guffs Gussie. So this is like the most typical one-two punch for walleyes is a live minnow and then an active bait. I like spreading it apart a little bit just to cover water and then you might find an area that's a little more active. Keevan fishes like Manitoba all the time and he was saying he was here with a crew of buddies the other day and like one guy might be catching a dozen in a hole over there and the next guy over might be catching one or two. It could be the lure but it could be the specific spot like there might be a specific travel corridor. There are weeds or transitions from you know rock to sand but uh, yeah. There's some fish. It, it might just be the time of day more than anything. If you're getting into ice fishing, you're like, what should I get? You want to get two walleye rods? I would get one rod specifically for those more aggressive baits and then one for the more subtle baits, neutral, negative baits, like that meathead jig. So that rod over there is the drench. It's got a soft noodle tip. It allows the fish to bite it and load up that rod. This is the true grit, a little more backbone, you know, maybe a little more suited for bigger fish, but also just you can use a bigger bait with it. it. uses that rattle bait and it gives it a good action. So the drench, which is a 39 medium light and the true grit, which is a 38 medium. Yeah. Oh, Brandon, Brandon, Brandon. Oh, there's a fish down there. He just bumped me. Here we go. Oh, he just bumped it again. Keevan. Got him. Oh, I lost another to the bottom of the hole. What's going on? Dude, there are fish moving. That fish came in twice. All of a sudden, there's a weed in front of my camera now. We'll see if this fish bites again. Even if saying how you'll sometimes lose them and they'll just come bite right away. For some reason, this weed 
Came out of nowhere and is now in front of the screen. It is falling down though, so it might get out of the way soon. Even if you beat me to that bucket, the fish is yours, okay? But I've just seen how slow you move. So I pretty much am just calling it mine. I'll just make sure I've got everything prepared for to help you rebate after you lose it. This guy stresses me out. Brandon, can you hear me? Kevin smells and he's so bad at fishing. What's he saying? Here we have Kevin Erickson in his natural habitat. What's Once he saying? again, struggling to catch fish. Brandon. Looking off in the distance, not focusing on his rod, not focusing on the ice building up on his line, or the walleye swimming around his hole. There's no ice on this line. Please don't be like Kevin. Doing good, Kevin. Keep it up, buddy. Yeah, yeah. You're doing great. Just keep losing fish at the hole. At least I'm hooking them. What? Zoom in on Kevin's mustache. This is what a mustache should not look like. What? You got marbles in your mouth? <laughs> I'm on the phone. I'm sorry. Okay. The stinger did it. Nice. The sun is setting on Lake Manitoba. Thanks to Kevin for the guiding. We're on him. I almost hurt myself on that one. This rod's just so perfect for this. As I was saying, the drench I was talking about, I can see from a distance and I can just see it sitting like that. And the fish doesn't feel that much weight. It's still got that backbone. This is like, if you don't have a rod holder, just put it on the bucket just like that. A couple inches off bottom. We need to let Keevan catch one. I just keep beating him. Feel sorry for the guy. Here's a little tip for you guys that are recording your underwater clips. Every time something good happens, end that clip. Because with these recorders, if you lose power while it's recording, let's say the cable gets bumped on the fish, battery dies, and it dies mid-recording, you lose that entire clip. It corrupts itself. So anytime something good happens, I stop and start the clip. It closes that file. It's just safety. So anyways, we're back to jigging. I'll let you take the next one, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I've been referred to as the Mennonite Usain Bolt. I've heard that too. Just no fight out of these fish. You just set the hook and they're out the hole. Oh, wow. Oh, here we go, here we go. Come on. Oh, come on. I'm gonna pound in the mud. Hey guys, turn him back. Turn him back, we're gonna do a little raise. Oh. Oh man. We're gonna go pound in the mud for a bit. Didn't want to snap. It's pretty small, but it's hanging around. That fish I played with for so long. Normally if you get a fish there, you catch them. That's yeah. crazy. Cool visuals. Oh, there's a Wally Brandon. Oh, You're he's, on? He's, he's, I think. You see one? Oh, ice. What do we got? No. Uh, ice. No. Yeah, darn. No, Keevan. Get back down. He had it in his mouth for a long time, but just one hook. Really? He just came in hot and ate it. That's good. Maybe your dead stick will get hit yet. Oh yeah, that was a sweet, sweet strike. That fish just came in and killed it. Nice. Awesome. Look at that sunset behind us. Willie the walleye, and uh, he came in kind of exactly how you'd hope, just came in and killed it. Right, we're gonna stick it out for another couple of minutes and probably call it a day. Started my little interlake tour here. This will be lots of meat. Yeah, that'll be. You'll clean them? Yeah. And prepare them? Yep. Deep fry them? Yep. Oh, oh be so careful. <laughs> Where'd he go? That fish just came in, woof, killed it. That's kind of what you get when you get into these low light periods, these fish are hunting, you know? They might be hanging around beforehand, but then, Sun gets low, they just start killing. I'm using a 10 pound braid, a 12 pound floral leader. And that's pretty much it. Nothing too crazy. I mean, these fish are pretty much, I, I like having a little bit of heavier line, heavier leader, because you're setting the hook and pretty much just lifting the fish out. Especially if it's a bigger one, it's like kind of just give them the gears. You know what I say about when the sun touches the lake? When the sun touches the horizon, they will bite. And what happened? And they bit, even knows. You know when that light gets like, almost like, you know, is it still worth it for the aqua view? And that's when they bite. Was your dad having any action? None. Oh, I got one right here. Oh boy. Nice. 
Oh, dirty burb. He's coming up backwards. We did the grand slam. The grand slam. The perch. perch. Walleye. Burbot. Done. And it's a little cold, so we're gonna send him home. That was, uh, that was good. Oh, there's a walleye here. Walleye here. Got him. Oh, it's frozen. Oh, that was, that was pretty risky with the stinger on there. You just went for it. I went Dude, I went to go check on the hook and there's a walleye just coming, looking, looking, looking. And anyways, we got good eats tonight. The old sugar cookie rolling around in the snow, but there you go. This hole's been pretty good. We may as well drop back down in there. Did you see that jump? I jumped over all that. <laughs> I don't know why. Roll it back. <laughs> Keevan's been falling. He's been jumping. Another fish, another fish, another fish, another walleye. Yeah, look at this. Oh, come on. This is, this is prime time. He ate half of it. Got him! Keep in! Another one. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> as soon as it went back down, we'll put this guy back. I think we're good for food, eh? Yeah, I think we're good on food. All right, we're sliding that guy back. So fun. So fun. Man, it's just, it's just good times. Like I said, when you can barely see it on the camera anymore, then it's go time. Fish, 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 fish. Kevin, you want it? Yeah. Go, 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 go! The pail! The pail! Hit him, hit him! He's on it! Oh. <laughs> Lift. Nice. Decent. Wow. This has been the hot hole. That's a nice fish. Sweet. One of our bigger ones. Live minnows. Is it pickerel or walleye lord? One of the two. <laughs> Slide her back. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wrestling champ two years in a row. Undefeated. Ice wrestler. I heard your glasses. I heard something crack. I didn't know if it was my glasses. I definitely heard something crack. I thought it was your neck at first when I went. <laughs> All right, this has been working magic. I don't know how much we're seeing on the aqua view anymore, but. <laughs> yeah. Oh, big walleye. Come on. Oh, here we go. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I missed him. Oh, that was such a good shot. He'll bite again. Coming back. Coming back. Oh, oh no, no, he missed it. Just jammed it. Oh. I think he'll hit it again. He was just so aggressive. We are losing light, but that fish, oh man. I just was standing talking to you. Oh, here we go. That looks like a nice size. Oh, oh <laughs> yes. so good. Oh yeah. It's not too big, but a nice fish nonetheless. This is about the average walleye yeah. that you see out here. Thank you, Keevan. Yeah. Another one for the team. Kind of started off slow and this has been a sweet night, despite how cold it is for end of March. But um, man, when you catch walleyes in three feet of water, generally they seem to be quite aggressive. The camera's starting to flicker into night mode. <laughs>